Good morning. morning. Welcome to the First Congregational Church of Crystal Lake. This is a very special day. It is the 100th anniversary of Veterans Day and the Armistice uh, Day of after World War I. And so on this day, let us take a moment and let us thank those, uh, all of those who have served in our military, for it is through their sacrifices and their efforts that we continue to enjoy so many of our freedoms. We remember that in addition to this being the 100th anniversary of Armistice Day, that 97 years ago, the World War I unknown soldier was laid to rest, thereby becoming the unknown soldier in Arlington Seminary who serves as a reminder to all who gave their lives in order to preserve our freedoms. At this time, in order to accord the highest honor and with churches throughout our land, we will be tolling our bell 21 times. 21 is the highest honor that we uh, give in our nation. And so let us reflect on and give thanks for our veterans and those who have sacrificed everything on behalf of all of us in our nation. Beloved, please join with me in our Veterans Day litany. As you, uh, different folks, are invited to stand, I invite you to remain standing uh, for the remainder of the litany. God of love and peace and justice, it is your will for the world that we may live together in peace. You have promised through the prophet Isaiah that one day swords will be beaten into plowshares, that yet we live in a broken world, and there are times that war seems inevitable. So let us recognize with humility and sadness the tragic loss of life that comes in war. Even so, as we gather here free from persecution, we may give thanks for those who have served with courage and honor. At this time, I would invite all of the currently serving men, women, and also their families who are in our presence to uh, rise, and their families as well. So if you have a family member who is currently serving in the military, uh, I invite you to rise now at this time. Please join with me. God, we praise you for those who are willing to serve. Let all soldiers, Marines, sailors, airmen, and Coast Guardsmen serve with honor, pride, and compassion. Do not let their hearts be hardened by the actions they must take. Strengthen their families. Keep them surrounded in your love and peace. I now invite all those who have served in our veterans and our presence to please rise. God, we praise you for those who have served in the military. We thank you for those who put the welfare of others ahead of their own safety. Let us all be inspired by their self-sacrifice in service to those who needed protection. 
I now invite all those who have lost a loved one uh, while serving in the military to rise at this time. Pray with me. God, we praise you for those who have given their lives. We ask that you comfort those that still feel the pain of their loss. Keep us mindful that you have promised to comfort those that mourn. And now I invite everyone, all of us who have benefited uh, from all of those who have served and continue to serve to rise at this time. Let us pray. God, we praise you for granting us these freedoms. Let us honor those who have served by working for peace. Let us never forget those who have served. And let us never let go of your promise of peace. Amen. Indeed, let us never let go of the promise for peace. Whenever we gather here, we gather in the peace of Christ. We give thanks for those who have served, but in and among all of that, we give thanks for the love and grace of God that calls us together, that moves all of creation toward a culmination of love, peace, and justice. With that in our hearts, I invite you to greet one another and pass God's peace. Please join me in the great commandment and the Lord's Prayer. They asked, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus answered, hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. 
The second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, and make all the law and the prophets. You shall put these words on your heart and on your soul, and you shall teach them to your children. Hear us, O God, as we pray together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. seated. At this time I'd like to invite all of the children if they would like to to come forward and join me on the stairs. As they're coming down please send coats with them. Reminder to the whole congregation we do have a fire drill after worship this morning so hopefully you have your coats. If you're sending your kiddos forward send their coats as well. If they don't have them we can maybe grab them later. And then a reminder to families and parents that after the fire drill we need you to pick your children up in the field where they will be waiting for you. We won't be sending them back into the building. We won't be sending them out onto the streets either, but please do come grab them in the field. So you'll be in the front of the church and the kids will be in the back of the church by the um, Catholic uh, playground field. So please come claim them there. Good morning, friends. Good morning. I'm so glad to see you. How are you this morning? Good, good. Who was excited to see the very first snow? I got one, maybe two. <gasps> Snow is exciting and a fire drill is exciting. Yes, there's all kinds of good stuff happening this week. Also, um, I brought with me, what's up, Sam? Maybe we can see the first fire drill. We can. We're going to see the first fire drill. We're going to do one today after worship, and it's going to be pretty neat, I think, and good for us to learn together how to be safe and how to care for each other. Yeah. What's really special? You are not even afraid of loud noises and not afraid of a fire drill. You're all going to do amazing things today and always. And you're going to um, do that because that's part of what we do when we come together as a church, right? We learn to be brave. We learn to do things together. And I brought a word that um, I'm hoping that we have learned. And if we haven't, maybe today's a good day for it. So who has ever seen this word before? What is this word, Jack? The word is disciple, and it means follower. Yeah, what would you like to add to that? Same thing. Same thing. Yeah, that's good. So this word is disciple, 
And it means follower. And when we see this in church, we usually think of people who followed a really specific guy. Who do you think that was? Disciples were people who followed Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, the stories that you've heard about the disciples, what were they like? What did they do when they followed Jesus? What have you learned about disciples? Anything? Anything special that really stuck in your brain? We know that they followed him, so they probably traveled with him, right? They would walk around with him. They'd go new places with him. Um, They were following him by learning, too. So sometimes he would teach them things that they could stick in their brain and hold on to. And they were following him in their hearts, too. So Jesus was teaching them how to love in whole new ways. Now, it just so happens that we have some really special people in this sanctuary this morning. Because did you know that there are disciples here right now? If I were to ask you who you think the disciples in this room are, who would you think the disciples are? Can you spot them? We're doing one of these. Everyone! Yeah, yeah! We talk about disciples sometimes, and we think that they were really special, one-of-a-kind people in the Bible, and they were very special, but... Everyone can be a disciple of Jesus, and that includes you, and that includes you, because all we have to do to be a disciple of Jesus is to follow what he taught. And we follow what, we, what he taught by remembering him in our minds and in our hearts. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray in a special way today. I want you to put one finger on your noggin, like you're thinking, all right? Because we're going we're gonna to follow Jesus in our brains, and we're going to remember what he taught us. But then I want you to put one hand, your other hand, on your heart. This is how we follow Jesus, with our heads and our hearts and with our hands. So this is how we're going to pray, and let's pray together. Dear Jesus, we thank you that we are your disciples. If we can remember your stories, if we can hold on to your teachings in our heads and in our hearts, we are disciples and followers of you. Jesus, help us to remember you in everything we do and to remember that we are special disciples of yours. In the name of God who loves us and Jesus who loves us, we pray. Amen. Beloved friends, just like the children who were sitting on our steps a moment ago, you all are disciples of Jesus, too. If you can hold him in your head and hold him in your heart, you are indeed a disciple. And as disciples, there are many things that we are called and invited to do, so I have a few announcements for all of you. One is about the community harvest that's happening this week, and I hear that there's a special guest somewhere in the building. So I'm wondering if, oh, here he comes. Good morning, everybody. I'd I'd like to introduce you to Wishbone. He is our community harvest mascot, and he is here to get you excited about donating to community harvest. Can you, yay! What do we have in the box there, Wishbone? How are we doing? Doing okay? Do we need more? Do we need more? How do we ask them for more? Do we have a sign? There you go. Um, We're really excited that um, our participation is really huge this year, and we're really excited to be here. Um, I want everybody to know that um, our church is the first church to have Wishbone as a a guest, so we're really excited about that. (laughs) 
Um, we have some, we have a, a ways to go. We'd like, we need to fill this box or overfill it by next week um, because we will be picking it up after, um, after Sunday next week. So we're really excited about what we've already done so far, but we need to fill the box, right? Right? Yep. Yes. So um, please bring your donations. You can bring it all week. You can bring it next Sunday, um, however works best for you. I believe there's going to be some b bags in um, Fellowship Hall if you need bags. If you don't, just go to the grocery store and fill them up, and um, we would be very grateful. So um, what else do you have to say for, to them? Do we want to thank them for what they're doing? Do you need help? There you go. Hard with those little turkey hands. There you go. Want to say thanks for always giving. So thank you all very much, and we're excited to see how full this is next week. All right, thank you, Wishbone. Uh, a couple other announcements, friends. Um, while you are dropping off your donations between now and next Sunday for Community Harvest, you are also invited, um, starting today actually, to participate in our Giving Tree Ministry. The Giving Tree Ministry is, um, uh, there will be a tree in Fellowship Hall. You're invited to go and check out the ornaments, the little hangers on there. We'll have names of families and children and all kinds of folks who um, need help making Christmas happen this year. So if you feel so moved, please do go and claim a tag off of the tree, um, and we would love to have you be a part of that. And while you're in Fellowship Hall, grabbing your tag off of the giving tree, please also stop by the tall white banners that are covered with bells that you will see in there. We are preparing to celebrate All Saints Day. We will celebrate All Saints Day on Sunday, November 25th. And as a part of that service every year, we try to ring out the lives and the sounds of those who have come and gone before us. So you are invited when you're in Fellowship Hall to take one of the small slips of paper in a basket near those banners, take a bell that is on a safety pin. You can write the name of a loved one on that slip of paper, pin it with the bell to the banner so that that person's life can ring out and be heard by all um, in a collection with the full cloud of witnesses on our All Saints Sunday on Sunday, November 25th. I believe Mike also has something he would like to share with us. Thanks, Emily. Uh, I'm excited about the Community Harvest and the Giving Tree because they're community events that's beyond our church. And we have another community event coming up a week from uh, tonight on the 18th. It's the Interfaith Thanksgiving Service. And after the shootings of a couple of weeks ago and everything, it's more and more important for the different faiths to come together and support one another. So I invite you on the 18th at 7 p.m. we'll be at the Tree of Life uh, Unitarian Universalist Church which is up on Bull Valley Road just west of Walk Up or Crystal Lake Blacktop depending on what you call it. Um, so if you could join us then, it's an interfaith service, there'll be a lot of music and, and worship, nothing real deep and profound, but just a real enjoyable worship experience. We also have a, an event tomorrow night, Common Ground is coming in from Deerfield to give us a presentation on Martin Luther and the Reformation, which again connects us to a lot of Christendom. Um, all the churches have kind of benefited from his his uh, teachings and his thoughts. And then the final thing is that Bible study is no longer um, meeting on Wednesday evenings, but we are still meeting on Thursday evenings at uh, Bring Your Own Bible at uh, Buffalo Wings and Rings. We have about, oh, usually about eight or ten people, and you can come. Uh, we're doing the Book of Micah this week, which is a short book. So do all of those if you can, or some of them if you would. Thanks. There is no shortage of ways to get involved in the life of this congregation. If that's not enough for you, we invite you to check out the Amen. There are more opportunities and exciting things happening in there. Please also do take time today to look at the insert that has the veterans' pictures. Um, we really want to make sure that everyone can see and appreciate that. Um, 
Friends, there is so much happening in the life of this church, so much good, so many beautiful, beautiful opportunities to be together in community. And part of what makes all of these opportunities uh, happen is our offerings and our gifts every single Sunday. So as the ushers come forward, if you feel so moved, I invite you to give generously and joyfully to the life of this congregation. While those plates are being passed, please also feel free to pass the friendship pads that are in your pews. Would the ushers please come forward? Come now to the time in our service when you are invited, if you would like, to share joys that you bring, concerns that you bring, things that you would like prayed for to this congregation. So if you have a prayer that you would like to have lifted, we invite you to raise your hand and usher with the microphone will come your way so that you can share your uh, prayer and your name for all to hear. Emily. My name is Sally Bird. I have a daughter that lives in Los Angeles. She has a friend that just about six months ago bought a home in Malibu. I was privileged to go see that home about two months ago. It's probably gone now. The, she was concerned not only of her home, but the vegetation and the animals that are probably gone too. So everyone in that area needs to have our prayers. Thank you. Kind of talking about the same thing. I have a sister who lives in California by Yosemite. She has a reverse mortgage that she's had 30 years or something. 
Well, the insurance companies are no longer insuring people for fire insurance in that area. So she's losing her house because of that. She's going to move here, so it, it'll work. Hi, I'm Peggy Kupitz. Uh, first of all, prayers for a friend who is in hospice and dying of cancer. And second, a good prayer for my half-brother who lives in Thousand Oaks and the fire seems to have escaped them. I'm going to sit down because I fall apart every time I do this. Um, thank you very much for um, praying for my father. He did pass. Um, but that 21 gun salute, he just had it two weeks ago. Thank you. Today, as we honor your father, we recognize and do give thanks for the service of all those who have served in the armed forces. We know that our veterans and their families endure hardship and separation and sometimes loss for the sake of keeping peace and fighting for justice around the world. Sometimes our servicemen and women work to assist and build up communities and suffering populations around the world. And Gathered as we are in the name of love and peace, it is with some uneasiness that we offer prayers for those trained in the ways of war, but even so, today we honor the commitment that our service men and women make to duty and their willingness to sacrifice of themselves. So as we pray, I invite us all to give thanks for men and women who have served our nation, for people whom the word loyalty has deep, true meaning, for people who have given themselves for a cause greater than themselves, and people who have risked their lives for someone else. So gathering all of them, and all of the prayers that we have spoken, and those that we have left unspoken in our hearts, friends, let us pray to God who loves us. Holy God, we give you thanks for this day. As we breathe in the crisp and cold, even autumn air, as we see the fall oranges and reds mingle with the remains of our first snowfall, we cannot help but wrap ourselves up in gratitude for this, your gift of creation. Allow such beauty to give us hope, to inspire us, to show us new ways of living, attuned to your goodness. O oh God, we give you thanks for those we love and those who fill our lives with joy, for those we long to be near, for those whom we deeply miss, and also for those who we have fought with, for those that we have turned against. In giving thanks for all, O oh God, we ask that you would turn our hearts toward forgiveness and reconciliation, even when that means giving up our stubbornness, our stuckness, our pettiness, and our pride. You are the God of all the edges of the earth, and so we ask that you would turn our hearts toward the widest hopes for reconciliation. We give you thanks for global conversations that point the world toward peace. We pray for the work of national leaders who negotiate on behalf of whole countries. We offer prayers for those who have the power to stand up against violence and say no to escalating chaos. We pray for those caught in the middle, those caught unable to escape fear and terror. We ask that you would bring your peace, O oh God. Bring the peace of your kingdom come. And as we lift these prayers, we also give you thanks today for our nation's veterans. We honor them for their faithful service to our country and for what they have done to defend and preserve our freedom. 
Generation after generation, brothers and sisters of ours have answered the call and their lives have been changed forever. We are grateful to and grateful for all who have served, whether in peacetime or conflict. But today, God, we remember especially, and we ask that you would remember especially, those who have been tempered by fire, those who continue to bear wounds of the body or wounds of the spirit as a result of what they endured. They lie in our veterans' hospitals. They struggle for recovery and rehabilitation centers. They suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder and survivor's guilt and moral injury. They yearn for peace in their souls. So dear God, we ask you to heal their wounds, to banish whatever inner demons may haunt them, and to give them peace within so that they may return fully to their families and to the world. We thank you, God, for all of our country's veterans those of past generations, and those who continue to earn this title today. May we never forget what our country asked of them and what they have given in return. Help us to give them the respect and honor that they are due, and strengthen our resolve to build a world modeled on your realm, where war will be pursued no more. In joy and sorrow, in peace and unrest, in sickness and in health, despite our struggle, despite our losses, despite our failings, God, you welcome us into the fullness of your promises. You offer us the gift of your grace and the forgiveness that we long to know. Hear these prayers for healing, for comfort, for peace, for a renewed joy. Hear all of these prayers that lay upon our hearts. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen.
Our scripture reading today is not the one listed in your bulletin. Uh, we're reading Matthew uh, chapter 15, verses 21 through 28, which is on page 797 in your pew Bible. This is an interesting passage. It represents sort of a pivotal point in Jesus' ministry where he's preaching not just to the Jews, but recognizing the universe of God's family. Let's listen for the word of God. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The word of God for the people of God. I want to read a couple verses from the Gospel of Luke, the sixth chapter as well, to go with today's reading. But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, and bless those who curse you, and pray for those who abuse you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of love, God of life, be with us now. May your spirit take hold deep within our souls, transforming us with your amazing love, your incredible grace. May we be transformed ever to be a reflection of that love and grace to ourselves, and to every other person in all that we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. They asked Jesus what was the greatest commandment in the law. And Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. And the second is like it, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. To which the one questioning asked, But who is my neighbor? I feel that same question hearing today's reading. You shall love your enemy. You shall love those who persecute you. The Gospel of Matthew says, You have heard it said that you shall love those who love you and hate those who hate you. But I tell you, you shall love those who hate you. You shall love your enemies. To which I honestly ask, but who is my enemy? When we have these large, kind of amorphous enemies that we think of in the world, we think of terrorists and people who are out there to do harm, but I don't really have a lot of concrete, specific enemies around me. Hopefully, you don't either. I remember growing up that we all knew who the enemy was, right? I mean, it was the Russians. They were the enemy. And I knew that because every Nintendo game I played, the Russians were always the bad guys. So it was very helpful to teach and indoctrinate our children in that way. But then 89 happened, and uh, the Cold War came to an end, and then it was a question of now who is my enemy. But even in the midst of the Cold War, even in the midst of the rise of global terrorism, even in the midst, it's still hard to grasp. Who is your enemy? If we're supposed to love our enemies, but I don't know who they are, how can I follow the way of Jesus? Often when I think of enemies, I think of those who intend me physical harm. But I have to be honest, there aren't a lot, not since probably junior high, that really have intentionally meant me physical harm. Now some of you may not be in that situation, so let me say here unequivocally that abuse Emotional, physical, spiritual abuse is unacceptable in any way, shape, or form. And so if you are in fear of physical harm yourself, then I 
pray for you, and I hope that you will talk to me or talk to Pastor Emily, that we may support you as best we can. But I suspect for many of us, the threat of physical harm is not a daily one. And so we wonder, who is my enemy? And yet, and yet, as much as I would like to say that perhaps I don't have any enemies, for as much as I would like to say perhaps there aren't those out there that wish me physical harm, and that sounds like a good thing, amen? Yeah, this is a good thing. We live in actually a safer world, despite what the news would say, than was many years ago. The world is indeed getting safer. I love the idea that maybe I don't have these enemies because, let's be honest, it kind of lets me off the hook from loving them. And right about the moment I'm feeling good about myself, this is the problem. I sit in bed and I turn on my phone and then I start reading my Facebook wall. Or I start reading my emails. Or I start listening to the news. And it's amazing for someone who has no enemies how angry and frustrated I get in such a short amount of time. Maybe some of you have experienced this as well. Now, there is nobody on Facebook who is actually threatening me physical harm, and yet they might as well be beating down the doors of my house in the ways in which I can feel my defenses rising, my hackles arise. And, of course, the worst time to do this is before bed, because while I was falling asleep, now I am wide awake and ready to launch a crusade against whomever or whatever somebody has decided to post or write or news me. It's actually interesting, you know, they did a study about this at the University of Southern California, and it's something they call the backfire effect. Some of you may have heard of this, the backfire effect. Now, you, like me, may hopefully probably think of yourself as rational, intelligent folks. Amen? Amen. 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 And as rational, intelligent folks, when we hear a fact or a story, when we hear something, we take that and we kind of weigh it against how we see the world, and if needs be, we adjust our worldview accordingly. That's a rational, intelligent way to go about life, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't do that at all. We do not do that at all. That's not how human brains work. So what they did, the University of Southern California, they took thousands of people and they, they uh, monitored their brains as they asked them specifically volatile questions and statements. And so they would uh, examine their brains and they would say things like, gay marriage should not be legal. And see what happened to the brain. Uh, we should have more restrictive gun laws. See what happens to the brain. Okay. Abortion should be illegal in every sense. See what happens to the brain. In every case, it was really fascinating. What they found is that the part of the brain that fires off immediately when we hear those things is the part of the brain called the amygdala. It's part of that kind of lizard brain that we have. It's actually the same part of our brain that goes into high gear whenever we are physically threatened. Whenever we're physically threatened. So I want you to think about this for a quick moment. When somebody says something to you that disagrees with your worldview, your brain biologically reacts as if you're being attacked by a pack of grizzly bears. Which seems ridiculous, but I ask you, I want you to think about the last time somebody said something, or you heard something that challenged your worldview. How did you react? How did you respond? I think that's part of the problem that Jesus had in today's reading. Jesus had his worldview, a first century Palestinian Jew, and his worldview was, in a way that we would view today, both sexist and racist. Those, the word of God was there for the Jews first. Jesus was a good Jew. In fact, as this woman is yelling to him, son of David, save my child, son of David, save my child, he just keeps on walking. He doesn't even acknowledge her doesn't even look at her, just keeps going, which is exactly what he should have done. A single Palestinian Jewish man does not 
associate with Canaanite women. The two do not mix. You don't touch, you don't talk, you don't interact together at all. That was the worldview that Jesus had at that time. He was a product of his culture. And as much as he was expanding the view of the grace of God within Judaism, there were limits even within Jesus' own mind. And here comes this woman, the audacity of her, to follow after Jesus and continue to ask for help, the impropriety, the scandal of it, to ask Jesus for help. And so Jesus ignores her and keeps going. He refuses to listen. How many of us respond the same way? I know often when I feel like I want to take the high road for my enemies, what I think is, you know what, I'm going to be a good and faithful person, so I'm not going to respond. Instead, I'm just going to stop listening. I'm just going to block or unfriend or avoid or just stop listening altogether. I don't want to be challenged by my enemies. I don't want to be challenged by those who have a differing opinion. And so instead, I surround and isolate myself with those who reinforce my own world view. That's what Jesus was doing. And yet, in this story, which is not a flattering story about Jesus, which is weird that it gets included in so many of the Gospels, this is not a story about Jesus being wonderful and grand. This is a story about a woman who, when her daughter is being killed, he calls her a dog and dismisses her. And yet something happens there. Something profound happens in that moment when Jesus says, I have come for the children of Israel, not for the dogs. And she says, but even dogs get the scraps from the master's table. And the miracle happens right there. It's one of the greatest miracles in all of the Gospels. It is greater than the feeding of the 5,000. It's greater than even raising Lazarus from the dead. The miracle that happens there is in that moment, that breath, Jesus changes. Jesus listens. He hears the voice of one who will counter everything that he knows to be true in his worldview, and it changes dramatically in one moment. And his eyes are open to the sexism of his culture. His eyes are open to the racism of his culture, and the gates to the kingdom of God, so limited before, have now been opened to the entire world. As Mike said, this is the pivotal moment in Jesus' ministry from Jesus preaching and teaching to the Jews to Jesus opening up the love and grace of God to everyone, everywhere. And it happens because he listened to one who you might consider to be an enemy. He listened. And his worldview changed. And in that moment, the world changed. Who is my enemy? What is the truth that our enemy speaks that we so desperately and so painfully need to hear? Are we willing to sacrifice our own worldview and that security around us to hear something new and different and transformative? Are we willing to be changed by one who might point out our own hypocrisies? Friends, we have to be able to open our ears and listen to those whom we might consider our enemy, to listen to that worldview. Because if we don't, if we continue to isolate and insulate ourselves 
from those who disagree with us. Well then, we are our own greatest enemy. Amen. Now, beloved, go forth into the world. Go forth into the world knowing how deeply loved and cherished you are. Go forth into the world knowing because you are loved and claimed as a beloved child of God that you can risk, that you can risk boldly. Risk being transformed. Risk being remade. Open your ears to hear the voice of God speaking through your friends, speaking through creation, speaking through your enemies. Go forth to bring about the kingdom of justice and peace, to serve the Lord. Amen. Once again, we are going to have our fire drill, and I appreciate your time and your patience. I know you're thinking, but in your benediction, you said we could leave. You can in just a moment. So part of our way of honoring uh, our, uh, not just honoring our veterans, but honoring the safety of our congregation is to practice this to make sure that everyone uh, knows what they're doing. The first and most important thing we want to do is for everyone in the case of a fire to remain calm. Now, uh, in the case of a fire, when the drill goes off, the first thing that uh, you need to do is to remain calm and then to look around you to see if there is anyone seated near you who may be in need of assistance exiting the building. And then to assist them, or if there isn't someone, to calmly make your way to the nearest exit. Now, there are several exits, and I want to point all of these out. A lot of you know, obviously, the double doors straight in the back. Uh, please do not all rush for those doors. There are three doors in the back of the sanctuary, the double doors in the front, and then two doors down a small flight of stairs. So if you're able to do that small flight of stairs, please take the two side doors, and there are ushers there to help assist you. If you're here in the front of the church, there is a, the closest exit is going to be right here through this door. The choir knows that you will be exiting out, and you'll be going out through the chapel door there. Now, after you exit, um, we are going to gather across Pearson Street in what is McCormick Park, and that is where we, we will gather. Now, I know the inclination is going to be to run to your cars and just go home. Please do not do that. Especially if there is a fire, please do not do that, because what it will do is cause a traffic jam in the parking lot, and then the fire trucks cannot get to where they need to be to put out the fire. So please, again, we will gather in McCormick Park. Now, if you have children, um, our Sunday school and the children will be exiting and be in St. Thomas Field, 
which is right across Lake Street behind us. So Pearson Street's on that side, the other side is Lake Street. There's a field right on the other side of Lake Street. That is where the choir and that is where the Sunday school children will be gathering. When we get the all clear, that is that everyone's out of the building and the fire is done and all of that, then parents need to go and pick up your children in St. Thomas Field. Everyone else, you are free to go and do uh, everything what you will. If uh, you cannot climb stairs, because if there is a fire, that means that the uh, elevator will not be working. So if you are unable to climb stairs, then see one of the ushers, then the ushers will have mine, and we will uh, direct you to the exit at the back of Fellowship Hall right here. That is a safety sanctuary area, and that's one of the first places that the fire, um, uh, the firefighters will come to help rescue. So we will be sure to take you there, and uh, ushers and others will be there to help you. Eric, yes. Uh, the melody makers, Teresa's yep. going to walk them across the thing, and then she's going to take them up to melody makers. Okay. That's great. Okay, so Melody Makers, if your kids are in Melody Makers, when we get the all clear, Teresa will take them back in to rehearse for Melody Makers. So you do not need to pick up your kid, uh, your child if they're in Melody Makers. Okay, now in a moment we are going to uh, actually sound the fire alarm. It's going to be very loud because it's a fire alarm. Remember, we want to stay calm, see if you have somebody to assist, and we are going to make it to your closest exit. Remember, this one here, there are three exits, the center and the two sides. We will gather in uh, McCormick Park. Today, because it's a drill, take your coat and hat with you. If it's a fire, leave everything. Nothing that you own is as important as you. We want you to be safe. All right, I'm looking for Lisa and... One more minute, all right. I told Lisa that if there actually is a fire, I'm just going to scream and throw my hands up. I thought that would be helpful. Awesome. That should be our alarm. That's amazing. I like that a lot. That's great. By the way, obviously, after... Oh, there we go. Please make your way calmly and slowly to the exits. We'll meet across the McCormick Park. No kissing. 